Good morning, Wales, and welcome to our very first edition of Coach's Corner. I'm Coach Ortiz. I'm going to be your host today. Today we have the great opportunity to do a sit-down interview with Sam Darnold. Many of you may not know who Sam is, but let me tell you a little bit about him. Sam was a starting quarterback at San Clemente High School, was a three-year starter, led him to the CIF Championship game in 2014. But not only did he play football, but he also was a basketball player as well, being a two-sport athlete. Sam was all-league and was a team MVP his junior and senior year in high school. And not only that, but going into after his senior year, he was named the Orange County Register Athlete of the Year. So there's a guy who dominated on the football field and also on the basketball court. And then after, after his senior year, he had a, a chance to get a scholarship to USC. At USC, he was a two-year starter. He was named captain, not only in high school in both football and basketball, but also at USC. After his career at USC, he made himself eligible for the NFL draft, and he went on to be picked number three by the New York Jets, which is a great accomplishment, which means he was the number three player in the entire world picked by the New York Jets. And that was a great night for Sam and his family. And after that, he got picked. He went on to compete for the starting quarterback job, and he's now the starting quarterback for the New York Jets. So not only is he starting quarterback, but he's also captain as well. But the best thing about Sam Darnold, which will be great for all you guys to know, he lives right here in Dana Point. So you may see him around town. You may see him in the off season, and make sure you go up and say hi. But he is a proud resident of Dana Point. So without further ado, let's have a little quick little interview here of Sam Darnold. For because I've always been a fan of of you know younger kids playing multiple sports. Uh, I think it's super crucial to you know train different um, parts of your body and, and different because. You know, football trains you for a lot of good things. Um, and then basketball, it's very more short area quickness and reaction um, that you're not necessarily going to get in football. Um, so I think it's always just very important if you do play other sports. I mean, it's fine if you don't. But if you do, I think it's important, especially if you like playing, you know, whatever it is, basketball, uh, baseball, track, <clears throat> whatever. I think it's very important to just, um, you know, once football season's over and now it's time to go run or play basketball or play baseball, like you should focus, you should be all in on that. Um, and Coach Ortiz would say the same thing. Um, you know, it's just, it's very important to, you know, because if you're going to be a part of something, and this is what my dad, my mom and dad always told me this, if you're going to be a part of something, you don't want to be, you know, it's kind of like the shirts we used to wear. You're either all in or you're out. Um, you know, when you, when you're a part of something, be all in. Don't, don't. I think, I mean, for me, it's, it, it's pretty consistent. Um, I think for me, like guys would, guys would tell you like after a win, I'm not super pumped up. Um, you know, yeah, I'll go celebrate with my teammates and, um, you know, smile and do all those things and jump around, you know, have a good time, but it's nothing crazy, you know, because, you know, at the end of the day, and this is kind of a weird way of looking at it sometimes, but like, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go out there and win, you know, it's nothing, nothing special. It's just, we got our job done and, you know, it's kind of like Bill Belichick would say, you know, we're on to Cincinnati. So um, it's just, you know, that's once, the, once the game's over, it's like, yeah, we won. And you, you know, you're thinking about the win, you're enjoying it for maybe Monday. Um, you know, after a Sunday game, you enjoy it for another day. And then, you know, that Tuesday, you're really Monday night, you're starting to think about the other team that you're playing. And then, you know, after you lose, um, you know, that sits a little bit longer for me. Um, because I want to learn, I want to learn from that tape and and learn from the mistakes I made. So, um, but mentally, I mean, it's all. I mean, I, I put everything on the line during games, and you know, I have comfort in knowing that. Um, and so, win or loss, I know that I did all that I could to win that game. And you know, yeah, I get. Pissed. You know, as weeks went on, I kind of realized that, but. Um, yeah, it sucked. You know, I got through it. I had a great family, great friends to be able to lean on during that time. But, um, 
that was definitely the hardest thing that I've dealt with so far. And um, I'm sure there are going to be things in the future, but adversity like that, it prepares you for other moments that are going to happen in life. Kind of like right now. Um, it just kind of calluses your mind. And I feel like that's, you know, it sucks. It absolutely sucks to go through and it's supposed to. Um, but you know, when you get through it, you're definitely a stronger person at the end of it. Yeah. I think there's two things that stick out, you know, when you talk about that experience that you went through that junior year is that number one, probably the first time in your entire life, you were not a participant on the field or on the court, you know, you were a spectator. Yeah. And one thing that stuck out to me was, you know, you took those losses hard and some of the players would play in the game. And that, that shows you talked about being all in earlier, about how invested you were in the school and in the program and the team. Um, you know, there's numerous times where I would see the look on your face during a game where you could tell, I want to be out there. I want to help these guys, you know, and you were a big part of that team and not be able to contribute physically, I think was something that was hard on you and, and us as a coaching staff, you know. Yeah. you know. It's funny when you, you know, surround yourself, I've always believed this and it was kind of instilled in me, you know, by my parents, but you know, you're really a, a product of who you surround yourself with and the people that you surround yourself with. And I instantly knew that Kyle and Josh were made of the right stuff. I knew that they were, you know, hard workers, uh, came to every single lifting session, came to every single run session, every throwing session, every, uh, every you know, film study session. Um, you know, they were, they were just, they had the same morals, the same values that I did. And I saw that right away and I was like, these are, these are guys that I want to hang out with. And, you know, we ended up just clicking. I think we, we click because of that, honestly, it's just because of our beliefs and um, you know, that's really the basis of how we get along. Um, the jokes and all that kind of stuff kind of comes along with it. Um, but yeah, I really do believe that, you know, you're a product of who you surround yourself with. And um, you know, my parents actually really instilled that in me uh, early on. I guess I just didn't realize it until now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>